checking in. Yo, can you hear me, Sam? Yo, can you hear me, bro? I'll put my camera. Yo, can you hear me? Yo, can you hear me or no? I can't hear you. Oh, shit. There you go. Okay, perfect. Yeah. How Audio. You I never use Zoom, honestly. <laughs> I usually just do computer calls eventually. Uh, How you doing, bro? Cool. It's a pretty big, uh, good utensil. Everyone uses Zoom nowadays. Yeah, pretty much. No, I totally get that. I just, I graduated college a while ago. How long ago? Uh, like, so I went to Quinsig, and I think I graduated high school in 2017, then I went to Quinsig in 2018, and then I graduated that in 2021. Okay, so how old are you? I'm 22 right now. 22. Okay, good yeah, shit. Yeah, so I got an associate's in business administration. Nice. Good stuff. Yeah, just a two year. It was mainly online. Like, bro, you can totally get away with, like, cheating every class for that. Oh, yeah. No, it's, it's, college now, nowadays, nowadays, it's kind of more of a joke, to be honest, that whole yeah, education. Pretty much. Yeah, My people. parents just really wanted me to get, like, a college degree at first, if anything. So, it's like, all right. But I always just really wanted to do art. But I know art college is really expensive. And, mm. like, drawing's always kind of been something I don't want to be forced to do. Because it kind of just, like, it comes out like I want to do it as much as possible. And, like... I like that force to be from me and not by everything else. That makes like, sense, actually. Is this your room? Yeah. Oh, it's fucking psychedelic as fuck. Dude. I just made all these this week, actually. This is all hand drawn, all of this. Straight up. Um, yeah, but you said it's, it's hand drawn on the fucking, and then you got to print it on top, right? Yeah, but it comes from these. So the originals are these small little patterns that you make. And then yeah. you flush them up into like these big, these big yeah. designs. Yeah, pretty much. Like, so all of it, I just basically, I used to just take pens. Well, I don't use to, I do it all the time, but I take pens and I just draw on a piece of paper. And then from there, you just create pretty much, I can scan any of those and then turn that into a vector file and screen print that. And when did you start doing these crazy like Maui patterns type of thing? I've always kind of been interested in, I guess you could say tribal, because as a kid, I was really interested in business, especially. So, so like- I, I can hear, could you repeat that? You I was, so I was really interested in mazes as a child. Like, you know, maze books, like yeah. start to fit. It's, good. Yeah. it's a maze. Yeah, literally the art of those is insane. Like there's a bunch of authors back then that I really liked. I don't remember any of their names, but it was something I'd do like at the nurse's office or something as a kid, or like just in a waiting room. You know? uh -huh. But- Either way, like, like what's, it, it what's, really, what's the art behind the mazes? Like, I'm actually interested in that subject. Like, what fascinated you about kind of what goes into making mazes and what what oh, itself to me, pretty much. It like, what? you have to be really good at drawing really close together lines, really small, with a pen. True. Not necessarily a pen. I mean, you can do it in pencil, but yeah. I just I like the fact that you can't erase. So every piece is basically like exactly how it was meant to be. Because like I can't go back. That makes sense. Yeah, that's that's part of it, really. Like, that's why I like tattooing, but I would never do it myself because I'm already in, like, graphic design as a career. Basically, so, like, I can letter vehicles, and that's my main thing. And uh, I screen print, too, as a job. You collect vehicles, you said? No, I letter vehicles. Mm -hmm. So, like, people oh, with companies, yeah. like oil companies, construction companies, like, transport companies, places that need trucks lettered or, like, even storefronts lettered with vinyl, essentially. Nice. But, like, I do all things vinyl, which is where this comes from, because I figured out that I can use these as a stencil, basically, and then cut that out and use that. But, like, I finally found a way to get my hands on large amounts of prismatic vinyl. I call that prismatic vinyl, by the uh, way. Yeah. I'll probably refer to it a lot, but it's just basically light reactive vinyl that you cut, and it's adhesive. It's meant to be bumper stickers. So, like, a lot of people can print on them for, like, you know, weed wrappers or, like, basically stickers that are holographic that you can order online and they'll cut them out. But this is, like, the ultimate form of, like, difficulty weeding that. So, mm -hmm. by weeding, I mean, with a vinyl cutter, you cut, basically, rolls of adhesive, and then you can take out pieces. You pick them up with a piece of paper and you put them on something. Okay. That's, like, the whole industry is based on that one concept where, like, let's say an oil company comes in. 
right? And they want like their big logo on the side of the truck and it's orange and black. You get orange vinyl and black vinyl, and then you cut a digital design of their logo, pick it up and then put it on the side. Interesting. And like the simplest way I can put it, but like there's no, obviously vinyl. So you need, and, you need like, machinery and everything that comes with it to be able to perform that. And everything is built in layers. You need a vinyl cutter and a PC pretty much and a roll of vinyl and then like transfer tape and then like the equipment to get on the ladder and put it on. Okay. And, and so, so you said you like tattoos, but you would never get a tattoo or you would never do tattoos? No, I would get tattoos. I'm just not like, it's not my art form personally. There's a lot of things that like I tend to avoid because I like to put all my skill points into one category. Okay. I what try, is which is drawing, what comes from there. You try to just become really good at one thing other than and then branch that one thing out okay essentially because everything starts with the drawings and then i can bring those into other mediums i see which tattoos could be another medium essentially it could yeah it would definitely it would be but it would have to be me doing my own art but like i just don't see like as much of like a profit in that overall as like a brand because like i'm mainly going to do streetwear because like i love screen printing and like as you can see, I do not spare an expense when I do it. Like I go everywhere on the garment. So like- Is this the piece that you want to auction out or no? Uh, not the one I'm wearing, it's this one. This is a purple champion. It's got two on the, on the hood. It's got the same print as what I'm wearing. It's just the only purple champion. And it's also the only one that I did that color, all that's, one color. So it's nice. a higher quality hoodie than all of the other ones, basically. I see. Okay. Like all of these blanks, they're jerseys, so I get them for eleven dollars, like MSRP. But they're actually worth like twenty five if you go to buy a blank. Mm-hmm. Pretty much. Interesting. That's pretty cool. Where the fuck do you get this plug? So I am a screen printing shop. Like oh, we so do wholesale. Companies, so I have access to. Yeah, exactly. Because oh, we already do it for the customer. I just essentially think of myself as the customer and then do the work for myself. Interesting. That's pretty clutch, actually. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, like, it's all my dad's equipment, but I have to work it. So, like, it's basically me holding down all the screen printing. And my friend, uh, Brian, he's been working there for a while, too. But when my brother comes back from New Zealand, we'll have a third person doing it. But I definitely hold it down while everyone's gone. Your your brother's in New Zealand? Yeah, he's four years older than me. Really? Is he working out there studying? What is he doing? Uh, He has a girlfriend he's living out there with, and he has a job out there. But you loved it. It's pretty cool, dude. I mean, that sounds like a vibe. To be on the other side of the world. Where do you live? You uh, I live in Southbridge, Mass. So, like, I'm I'm just Southern Massachusetts. So it's like fucking freezing right now where you're at. <laughs> I mean, today it was actually 45. Really? Wow. Yeah, it wasn't that bad. But I mean, for us, that's not bad. Absolutely. But the thing I do love about the East Coast is it's like the most variety of the seasons you can get. Like, it's an even amount of each thing. That's so true. you get to experience it all. It's not like you get tired of being hot or tired of being cold. It's like already gone in three months. That's so true. Like, that That's awesome. that. But I feel like mass, it's like an intense cold. It's like not like oh, yeah. the little yeah. the fucking, it's like you're freezing cold like out there. You'll fucking die. It's pretty bad. It sucks for owning cars, but other than that. Yeah, I can imagine. Yeah, I can imagine. Um, well, tell me more about your art, man. Like, okay, so you've always been doodling. You've always been getting into it and 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 like... How, how does it feel to have it on kind of prints and on vinyl and on clothes? Like, uh, Tiring, bro. I had to do all of it, just me by hand, everything. Like, mm-hmm. I am the screen printer. I'm obviously the graphic designer because I draw all of it. And then I have to weed all the vinyl. I have to spray paint all the panels. I've inhaled so much spray paint. It's hard to think sometimes. Like, <laughs> you know how it is. Yeah. Like, dude, when I get really into something, I can't just like it. I always end up loving it. Like, in one week, I managed to pull off eight of those. Mm. And they take, like, to cut it, it takes the machine, like, 30 minutes straight of cutting. And that's, like, that's at a decent speed, too. And then to weed it, they usually take me about an hour. And if I'm lucky, too, if it cuts right. And then um, I have to spray paint it, which takes another, like, half hour at least. And then drawing them in the first place can take up to six. Yeah. And And I try not to repeat them, but I do repeat them sometimes for those just to give them different paint schemes. But each one of those is one of them. That makes sense. Um, what other thing have you got into that you got kind of obsessive with in your watches? Life? Replicas. Watch- you ever heard of replica? You yeah, definitely what's, have. What's like replicas in general, like replicating something? Like no, no, not me doing it, but like replicas of designer or like watches or shoes. Okay, so, so like essentially like 
the, the fake market. Is that what you're saying? Well, there- yeah, but but it's really, really high quality fakes, like the hard to distinguish stuff. Like right now, it's like this was 250, and it's the movement is just barely off, but it's the same weight and it's the same quality as a real Rolex. You can is take that a Rolex? <laughs> no, it's actually gold. on the dial though. <laughs> That's why that you can't get them here. That's why it's a niche hobby. They're straight up illegal because you yeah. can't reproduce them. So it's like a black market of it, especially the good ones. Yeah, I, I think the good ones can sell out for a lot of money too. Well, here's the other thing. I don't like, I don't really care as much about quality when you can get quantity for cheaper. Like I collect them. So I try and get all of the uncommon ones. Like this is a, like, I get rare replicas, if that makes sense. Just like this is the Coca-Cola Submariner. How much does like, that cost? Like as a replica? Uh, this one literally fifty fucking bucks. Wow! And you can have pretty much any Rolex you want for like sixty to ninety bucks, depending on how good you call it, you want for quality. Interesting. Like Rainbow Daytona, it was one fifty. Yeah, but the diamonds are not BVS though. No, definitely. I mean, this is one hundred fifty thousand watch though. This is the oh, only no. way you'll ever be able to wear it. And like, who in reality cares that much? No. Like to me, I mean, the I've idea is this: look. I, I look. I have fucking a pair of uh, look. These are the fucking yeah. What are these called? They're fucking yeah. Uh, dunks. Uh, they're, 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 no, they're the dunks. The cherry dunks from fucking yeah. Let's see, bro. These things are worth like what three grand. I bought them for like, but I bought like the the, the really good replicas from this guy in, in in Asia that makes them. Like he literally has the same factory doesn't perfect but yeah, I, the vibram sweet coats too <laughs> see but i'd be doing that shit because i like to skate in those shoes right and i would never buy those type of shoes if they were worth x amount to then not skate in them right so that's kind of no, why exactly exactly i beat the fuck out of my shoes though like i can buy all the expensive clothes and actually wear them that's yeah. the thing like 55 dollars for these slides they would be like 150 bucks but i've been wearing them for three years and they're still in the same condition like yeah, the quality it's totally matters. It's pretty expensive too. If you think yeah. about it, slides. I know, because that's what I'm saying. Replicas are priced like regular shoes. They just are like exotic designs. So like you can totally get away with getting that. And people say they're sweatshops, but people in China need jobs too. Like it's right. not as labor intensive. It's not any better than another clothing factory. No, you're right. absolutely right. And I'm not I'm not denying it. I think the whole thing is fucked up. Like that I don't think that based upon one or the other makes more garments or less. <laughs> And the other thing is, like, I can get away with wearing what I want because nobody around me cares. Like, dude, I'm in Southern Mass. I'm nowhere near a city. Even if people knew that much about designer, like, half the people I talk to don't even know anything about, like, designer whatsoever. You just rock rock that $150,000 watch, like, very nonchalantly. Yeah, and I can just enjoy it. You know what I mean? I get my money's worth. I wear them all. I can wear a different one every day. Fuck it. Like, I can wear them underwater. I can beat on them. I don't have to worry. About Absolutely. You don't give a fuck. Rightfully so. Right, dude. Because I have another one in brand new condition if I beat one up. Like, whatever. Yeah. So you, so you really got you got into replicas and whatnot. You just started collecting. That was probably two years ago. But the thing is, I got replicas because I really liked shoes. I'm never going to be able to make shoes until I save up and buy a really expensive machine to do so to make the quality I would want to start with at least. Shoes. Cause that's that's a fucking art, dude. If you can make shoes, that's you're up there. <laughs> Interesting. Hey, you should like definitely. Come that. that would be cool, but how it's just machine, like how much does a machine like that cost? I have probably like fifteen grand at least. Interesting. And I'm already screen printing, which is already expensive as it is. One of those is like fifteen grand, like an automatic one. I also have a manual and a bunch of screens that we use. But either I, way, like I love I just like making it and seeing how it comes out. Every single one has different drawings. But I feel like there's a market for um for someone that makes shoes in the US without having it to outsource it to China. Does that make sense? Yeah. Like I think that if you were to buy that machine, bro, like I think there's enough custom clothing people or people that want to get into making shoes but don't necessarily want to have to make contracts with people overseas and have to deal with that whole communication barrier or whatnot. That I would, you could probably repay yourself that machine relatively quickly if you were to kind of outsource it as pretty much what you're doing for other people for this. Oh, yeah, definitely. The vinyl and everything that comes into it, you know? I just haven't even like started my brand off that much yet because I'm already worried about jaw surgery, which is uh, March 3rd. So I've just been super focused on the art aspect of it. You're worried about what, sorry? Jaw surgery. (laughs) I'm getting double jaw surgery March 3rd. Why? Because I have an underbite. 
Oh, you're doing it for the, uh, you're doing just yeah. aesthetically? Both of it. No, no, no. Like, I need it, like, to fix well, it. It's my teeth. No, no, no. <laughs> but I have an overbite. Got no, to... but I have an under. If you have an under, you have to fix it or else you're going to have breathing. So, like, I don't have a choice. I basically have to go through that. It's going to be what crazy. Happens, what happens if you don't fix it? I, I couldn't hear you. Sorry, you said what? Sleep apnea, basically guaranteed. Oh, fuck. Stuff the... like that. Like, st- it sucks if you don't. And, like, plus it is aesthetically pleasing, but my insurance will cover it free. Fine. So, like, plus. I only have a couple years until it wears off. So, it's like, fuck it, yeah. I have to do it. And what's sleep apnea? Is it, like, when you can't sleep or what? Yeah, like it's just basically you wake up like in the middle of the night randomly. Oh. I don't have it yet, but I would if I didn't fix it, what I'm doing. So, so yeah. like it, take, it takes X amount of years for that shit to pop up. Yeah, it, like it can have something to do with your jaw, but like it's guaranteed if you have a bad underbite, you don't fix it. Interesting. Oh, bad enough. Not bad, but like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, either way. How crazy is a fucking jaw surgery? insane like they they cut your top and bottom jaw and then wire your teeth shut and then you have to like not be able to open your mouth for like three months and you have to eat like would repeat that Sorry. They, they cut what of your mouth <laughs> yeah dude they cut the back of the top of your teeth from the back of the bottom and then they like install plates and screw it together so your jaw heals a new way so like they literally reconstruct your face with your jaws essentially that's insane it's wild dude it's wild but they know what they're doing. But it's wow. it's, it's insane, dude. Like, Fuck. it's been stressing me, but that's why I turned to art. Like, that's why I can get lost in that and not have to worry about something like that. Interesting. So in three months, you're going to have to go, you're going to undergo this, this procedure. Yeah. And I'm then- just hyped because I'm making, like, a cushion of stuff to come back to where I can look around my room and be like, yo, I worked hard to, like, not have to work for this month and just sit back and heal. That's pretty cool. And, and, that's uh, the I kind of like that. Um, but so, and it takes three months where you, you can't open your mouth. Yeah. Wow. About, about that. So you're just like drinking soup and shit? Yeah. <laughs> like straight oh. up. I'm doing that, dude. I gotta do it. Like, no, I mean, I respect it, bro. Fuck. I mean, I feel like speaking about that, bro, like it's always fucking. Yeah, let's see the fall hoodies. These ones are not insane. These ones are nice, bro. I like the Dude, different... when I print them, I try and make them all different. I'll throw different pieces of ink on them at different times. So some of the sleeves have random blotches of color like that. You can see a little like circle of orange. That won't be on any other ones because the ink disperses. Mm-hmm. So I do try and make them printed just a little bit differently. Oh, I see. You know from a mile away, it's something I made because you can see my art on it. I guarantee. That's cool, bro. No, it's, 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 definitely, it's definitely very unique. This is a one of one. This is like my number one thing I've ever made. Why did you cut this your number one? So see how much space I fit that in between when I printed it? Yeah. yeah. I have to hit that and then move the platen and flash it so I dry it and then hit it again. So that like moved off the platen and moved back on. It I even hit the moose in it. That's that's <laughs> and you did a little embroidery too. No, that's that's screen print. Oh, that's sure. just a really strong screen print, so you can't tell. Interesting. Because I can use lower mesh screens and like I can print really heavy ink to make stuff pop off pretty much. Wow. Like I have full control over how it looks pretty much. Yeah, how much how much do you price if someone would want to do screen prints with you? How much would you make them pay? Um, it just all depends. Like if you have a small number and a lot of stuff you want on it, they're gonna be more because you can mess it up a long way and have to restart, or like it's just not gonna be worth it because people leave and it's like you don't make much money and it takes forever to set up screens, but if yeah. you order, like, somebody ordered 900 shirts one time with seven different designs, and we made, like, nine grand on that order. That was one of the biggest ones I've printed. It was this company, Bay State. So they make, like, a, they're a beer company out in Worcester. They brew beer. And uh, they, they, they ordered merch through us, and I had to print all 900 shirts. And it had, like, seven different backs and, like, a five-color front. And every back was, like, five to seven colors. Wow. So, Yeah. So that's colors a- are like there's little separations of like spaces on a screen and you push ink through it and I use a different color ink so like six different. Um, yeah. But what what if you were to do it for someone that's like a, a small designer or something like someone that would want to just be like look you have that expertise um you, you do shit obviously very clean um how much would you charge for like a basic design something maybe two colors three color you know. Uh, it just depends, really. I mean, like, if you want something that's two colors and you wanted, like, 12 of them, probably, like, five, six bucks a shirt. 
Interesting. That's not depending bad. on how many. Like all depends on how many you pay less, the more there are. It's oh, like uh, it's wholesale. Yeah, the more you scale it, the more you uh, you kind of get benefits. That's that's really cool, yeah. bro. I think essentially I think that's why so when I print stuff, I'll make like thirty instead of like two. Because like I might as well get my money's worth, and it does take extra time. Like honestly, Facts. they all come out different. That's honestly my favorite thing about it. Just very slightly with screen printing. Okay, and what what else are you interested in, Sam? What what passionates you other than? I got really into VR earlier last year. Virtual reality. Yeah, it's wicked fun, man. If you get into all of the uh, the really good indie games on Steam and Oculus. How is that? First, I've never like wild west of devs. I've never played um vr dude it was like being a kid again like when i got an oculus quest 2 and you can hook it up to your pc like right out of the box so like you can play basically any vr game that's ever made for 300 bucks like two controllers and headset Um, um, and um like just it looks phenomenal it's really good enough like you can play anything the controllers are what the Wii wishes it did like to me the most impressive part about it are the controllers like each button is touch sensitive and it's motion sensitive and they vibrate in different parts. Interesting. And like all while you can see your hands in the headset. Like it's honestly ten out of ten. They have Google Earth too. That's crazy. What's what's your favorite game on that shit? Honestly, I love showing people Google Earth, but Blade and Sorcery is amazing. It's just like a medieval combat simulator that you can add mods to. It's like Gmod but melee in VR. So you, you're just fighting in a fucking arena with like shield. Yeah. That's really cool. And like player made stuff. So like hundreds of people have made mods for the game and you can just add them in. So it's just like a random, like just shit ton of stuff that you can play with. It's an amazing game, honestly. That's really cool. Is it competitive? Like is there like league? Oh, no, it's just single player. It's like PvE, just bots. Oh, but you, it's you can't, why can't you do a fucking uh PvP? It's just like everybody would have different mods, pretty much, I if see. they did that. Because you just have a whole set of random mods that you put in, and it makes it so much more fun, honestly. I see. Oh, we've been playing BeamNG. We have a driving sim downstairs. You you were playing what, sorry? BeamNG. What is that? You heard of that? It's a driving simulator with realistic damage. Oh, interesting. So we also got like a whole fucking. Game. You have yeah. the fucking. The steering wheel and gas pedal. You want to see the gallery? Hey, show me. Fuck it. All right. We got everything on my walls. These, all these new ones. It's insane. Yeah, you're wild in there, I swear. Oh, yeah, that whole wall. There's the jester out there, all my shoes. I love Louboutins. It's got all the red bottoms, dude. Got the replica Louboutins? Yeah, but I mean, honestly, can you oh, really? Yeah, no, I respect it, bro. <laughs> I respect them. Yeah. You even got the inside labeling. <laughs> you can get the rare ones, too. This is the Aurelian. It's got yeah. five different type of materials in there, even on the replica. like. <laughs> That's the thing. You can just buy a niche pair, and then people won't even know their face. Got the chunky donkeys too. Oh yeah, of course I do. Everyone yeah. does. Those are the best, dude. You know it. These go all the way down the stairs. Wow. And this whole end of the hallway. This one I could never replicate, dude. Oh my god. So I spray painted that with all glitter paint, and I put the vinyl on too early, and then it peeled off. But it took the imprint of the vinyl off, so there's no vinyl in there. I see. Could never do that again. That's pretty. I did a perfect time. It took so long to take the paper off. It's another eight footer. Wow. And how much that, would you sell something like that? What? How much would you sell like an eight footer? Uh, one like that, probably like right now, like that one, and they live nearby, and I could just go put it up, probably like six fifty, seven hundred. Okay. Only that big. I mean, and I'd probably give them a hoodie with it, just cause. Yeah. Something like that. That's crazy. Something insane, though. Oh, fucking every- also depends on who's asking. <laughs> hey, your dad, your dad really supports this shit. Huh? He puts it all over his house. I yeah, love- well, this is my house. This is my apartment. Oh, okay. So this is your place. Interesting. Yeah, I rent this. Oh, nice. I have a roommate kill. That's sick. It just keeps going. Like it really is. Wow, bro. I put more up against the wall. These are all minis. Those are really annoying to make. The amount of weeding in that just feels like surgery. Oh, I see. What so those boxes right over here. This is all full of clothes that I've made for the clothing line, like filled. For your line, for your brand. Yeah. Wow. Like bottom to top, 
I've done that much. I keep investing money and just buying blanks and printing them. They're all good ones too. They're all jerseys at least. I usually do jerseys are better. That's really nothing. Amazing, bro. And there's like a whole bunch of different types. That's not all one type by any means. There's like I got zip ups, I got pullovers, and every single one is different drawing. Like honestly, this is like, a lot of <laughs> you put into the ship. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, that's my favorite piece. Let me move these. Oh yeah, it's made of aluminum too. Like that straight up is an yeah. aluminum sheet. I just work and then reinvest the money in this pretty much. I it's worth it. That I would never sell that one. Wow. Spray painted with glitter vinyl on top. All of this is just prismatic black, pretty much. That was really hard to find. There's only one seller on eBay. I had it. And then it's another two piece. Each one of these, dude, like straight up hand weeded. And I've, you've seen the videos I posted. Just straight up, like nonstop pulling out pieces of vinyl. That's a really early piece. Ooh. Is that drawn? Drawn. That's drawn. Yeah. I like that. I wrote the entire lyrics to Worlds by Porter Robinson into it. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, it's one of my favorite albums. I like that. I got one out behind the fridge right there. The moose. That's 100% the staple. Like, I put that on so many things. Yeah. Honestly, yeah. Question, what do people think when they come into your house? <laughs> Dude, my neighbor is like really Massachusetts. And I don't know if you know what that accent sounds like. But he comes over, he's like, holy shit, dude, you got it going on. <laughs> he's like walking around, freaking out. Dude, he's so funny. <laughs> he's going to buy stuff, though. He, the people are always down, like, honestly. Even if they don't have money, I, like, appreciate the support. <laughs> Not support. You got to support living artists. And, bro, the dedication that you put into this shit, it's pretty. Uh... Okay, so this was actually the one that I wanted to explain. I got it. Like I was looking for this whole time. There's a torch. Wow. Didn't flip. I meant to flip. There we go. Come on, camera. There we go. Wow, flip back. Back to the floor. <laughs> it's killing me. All right, there we go. But yeah, this is the one. Okay, explain um, it. This is the light on it. Okay, so <clears throat> let me get the drawing itself. I know I have it right here. So I don't know if I could line that up, but no, basically, I this is a road, right? And there's this kid I know who died like on this road right near my house. I think it's route nine but either way it's right near the highway and it's a 50 and he tried to pass somebody and he skidded because it was the middle of winter and then he crashed into a tree and instantly did it like 21 but i drew this so it's like a road and it's going into the like the gates to the afterlife and then there's a smash headlight here with an eye in it because it's the face of death and if you look at this i did it in gold because it's almost like heaven it's basically the image of purgatory if you die at the wheel because there's the bezel you have like the side of the car, and then like the top here, how it's blank. And at the bottom, it just goes up and there's a blank there. That's not normal for my stuff. Cause it's, as you can see in the drawing, there's like a gap. So, so some of your drawings do have like ulterior yeah. meaning to them. Yeah, there's like five or six of them where they really do. Like, it'll be a building that I have something to do with art with or stuff like that. Like, um, let me show you. So I have right here, this is the AO in Southbridge. It's the American Optical Building. And it's basically, it was um, a glasses factory back in the day. And my dad owns this building. It's 6 DuPaul Street. That's a, uh, a place in Southbridge right near where I work. And there's a 6 hidden in it. And that's actually the building itself. And then there's another strip of buildings in the corner of Southbridge that I put down there. And then here's a four-way in the middle of town. And then it breaks. And here's the DMV where the spiral is. And it like, there's a three way there. And then over here is the shop. So there's a church near it. And then the shop itself, you can see right here, like the front of the building. And this is where all my art is on the side. And then it's upside down here again. And then there's this brick building on the corner at the bottom right here. That's... And I think that's all the building. Oh no, there's, um, this is my apartment. Literally the building that I'm in is on a hill. So you can see the hill right here going down. And the mm -hmm. building's kind of built like on a concrete barrier right here. Mm -hmm. And the driveway is right here, and then there's a fence around the corner, two doors, and then all the windows, and it's it's a house. It's 54. Uh, I think there's it's one. Really an interesting way to even see these, uh, like an interesting way to kind of depict stuff that you see. Like 
I mean, you know, yeah. like within, I, I love the stuff that's kind of like when it gets into detail, like you got to really be looking at stuff to like be able to catch the details. This is my childhood house. See, with Cloutier. See how it says Cloutier on the inside. It says Lake right there. And then the address 180. And there's the house itself with a horseshoe driveway. And there's a boat. Here's a dock, right, with all of that stuff written in it. And then the boat right there. It's a little speed boat. Mm -hmm. We have the, where's the boathouse? Right here. That's the boathouse on the side with my cat's face in it. Because I have two cats. So there's the first one and then there's the second one. Mm -hmm. I see it. Isn't that weird? I just, the random ones like this are honestly some of my favorites. There's a little boathouse right here. That is like the exact view you get of the lake when you're walking around the corner near it. But, but so when you make these things, do you always start with an idea or just does it come up? With ones like these, yeah. But other ones are just freehand. Like stuff like this where I draw half or like I just straight up freehand something. Like this one, I wanted to make kind of a genie coming out and you can see it's kind of like coming out or something. It's actually on the back of the fall hoodie. Let me see. I wanted to make a character for that one at least. I see. And that's where that hoodie idea pretty much came from. I extracted it from there and took all the outside stuff out of the drawing. And then I just put that on there. Sometimes I do make characters though. Oh yeah, the most. This actually ended up being my favorite drawing like of all time out of everything I've done. It wasn't even like that recent of one. It was November 12th, 2020. Wow. It was the moose. I put that on so many things. That's the one that you told me. It's like the basic. The Yeah. That's honestly one of my favorites. It's at the top oh. of this one. Why is that one of your favorite ones? It's just one of the most recurring, like, stamps that you, like, know I was there almost. I've just made so many pieces of it, and I can just fit it. Just a little cutout. It's the moose. It looks nice on its own, pretty much, without the drawing, even. But that's on a lot of things. Like, it's actually on the back of the hoodie, too, not just the pocket. So it's actually on the front and the back of this one. That's really cool, bro. I, I also, like too, it's this white with black on top. So that's two screens that I had to print out with. I see. I see that. Pretty much. Bro, I like different colors of these, too. I feel like I keep showing me these little things forever, and I'd always be amazed. I'll keep looking at them. And I feel like I feel like... Like, they really are. This thing weighs two pounds, and it's, like, it's thick mm -hmm. aluminum. It's even a protector still on the back. That's industrial. Would you, were you supposed to, like, would you frame those, essentially, if you were to? So, it's literally a sign. Like, that material is what a stop sign is made out of. It's that thick, so you don't even have to. Like, that's straight up vinyl. That's meant to be outside. But you like, put them up inside, obviously, because they're art. But you totally don't even have to frame them. Like, they're, they're meant to be flat against the wall, really subtle, but, like, stand out. So like they don't protrude at all. That's the best part. A frame would make them protrude because it would like it would go around the edges, but I just kind of like the bezel-less thing. Where like they can just be flat in a wall. Like as you can see, that one's thicker metal. Oops, it's gonna fall. But yeah, like just straight flat into the wall. And how do you stick them? I have adhesive strips. Sometimes they leave holes in the wall, but fuck it. Well fuck it. Yeah, at that point, like I just want it up. At this point, you're right. You just got so much. So this one. Is actually the back of uh, the new. Let me find it. The newer hoodie that I want to do. That is that. I see. That looks crazy. It's insane. I can do smaller versions too. Some of them I have a couple of different sizes of, but I really don't try to like replicate them and make too many of the same one. Right. Gotta switch it as much as possible though. <laughs> That's wild. Um. Okay, bro. Anyway, just speaking about the actual auction and everything, are you available? Like, are you down to do it on Monday? Uh, yeah, this Monday. Fuck it. I'm down. Okay, wait, wait. Let's just finish this off. Um, but what time, though? Uh, wait. First of all, I want to ask you a question. What advice would you give to um, artists to kind of perfect their crafts in the way that you kind of have? Find a medium where you can, like, really lose yourself in it like one of the most grindy tedious mediums you can and incorporate into your work because then you can show like more of your true self through it if that makes sense that does make sense and and by me would would you say it takes a lot of time to like find the right medium or is it something that you just kind of feel 
it's it's definitely something that can either take time or completely fall upon you it just depends on how your work ethic is and if you decide to chase it earlier on but it can just still come to you later in life like I know a lot of people who found it way later on but either way you just have to like give a lot of yourself to it to make it happen because like I've definitely invested so much time and made sacrifices for it but it was definitely worth it I respect that I respect it a lot um great I'm, I'm gonna i'm gonna actually stop the recording right now because i have like over that we've been going you've been going for 30 minutes and i have to edit this in a 15 yeah, no worries minutes. man no worries thank you seriously i'm just gonna stop the recording but we can we can 